Hi, I'm Dave Lockwood, Extension Fruit and Nut Crop Specialist for the UT Institute of Agriculture. Today, I'd like to talk with you about growing strawberries with special focus on organic production. Strawberries are one of our favorite crops. A good bit of that is due to the fact that they're the first to ripen in the spring of the year, and we've gone through that long, cold winter without any good locally produced fruit crops. There are two different types of, of plants that we work with, the June bearing and the day neutral plants, several varieties of each, and three major production systems that we utilize. Selection of the production system depends a lot on the type of plant we're growing and the reason that we're growing strawberries, uh, our market. June bearing strawberry plants are the most common in Tennessee. Uh, and this plant will set its fruit buds in late summer and fall in response to day length, actually night period. But uh, they may be grown as annuals in the plastic culture system or as perennials in a matted row system. The characteristic of June bearing plants is that they will fruit intensely over a short period of time, generally somewhere between two and five weeks, depending on variety and the production system that we use. The matted row system is one that we've used for years and years and years. It's a perennial system where we plant and maintain it for several years. We use June bearing varieties and set our plants in the spring of the year, generally in March. Uh, we use in a relatively wide in row spacing of between 18 and 24 inches between plants. The spacing between the rows will be about 36 to 48 inches, and this will vary somewhat depending on what type of equipment you have to care for your planting. One very important aspect of, of that first year with the matted row system is to remove blossoms that show up on the plants throughout the summer. We want to get a lot of runners produced off of those plants, and we want these runners to grow out and peg down and form a solid mass of plants from one end of the row to the other. That's where we'll get our maximum yield, and we cannot do that if we allow blossoms to uh, slow down or to reduce the vigor of the plant. If you cannot get in and pull blooms, then you might consider planting a little bit closer together within the row to compensate for that reduced vigor in the plant. This picture shows a uh, matted row field in full bloom, getting ready to go into harvest. Uh, notice how we've got a nice plant stand from one end of the field to the other. We also have well-defined walkways, and that's important as we need to get through to take care of the plants. We also need light into the field and, and good, well-defined uh, gaps or walkways between rows will help give us better light penetration. Harvest in a matted row system generally will run from about mid-May through the month of June. This will vary depending on the varieties that you use and also your location in the state. After harvest, the plants go into a semi-dormant stage, and this is the time to renovate the planting. And renovation is the key to successful matted row strawberry production in successive years. We want to go in and remove most of the older plant material. That is, narrow up the row and then thin out the, the plants within a row. Now, I like to do this uh, as soon as possible after harvest so that I can get maximum runner production. These new runners will go out and peg down, and that's our next year's crop. We get better yields off of runner plants, off of those new daughter plants, than we do the older plants that uh, carried over from the previous year. Prior to removing these plants, if you can go in and fertilize based on soil tests, just the act of removing the plants, whether you do it with a rototiller or, or hand uh, pull the plants, will help to incorporate the fertilizer in the row so that when a runner plant pegs down, uh, the roots have got access to that modified soil environment for better growth. Start the irrigation at renovation. Uh, it will give you better runner growth. It'll give you more runners and better yield potential for the next year. 
Weed control is a year-round challenge in strawberries, especially for the organic grower where the uh, availability of herbicides is somewhat limited. But weeds can strongly compete with a strawberry plant for moisture and nutrients, and if they get too high and if they shade the plant, they can impede fruit bud development, they can reduce fruit color and fruit sugars. They also can increase diseases because air drainage throughout the canopy of the strawberry plant will be adversely affected. So weed control throughout the year is important. The average life of a matted row planting is somewhere in the neighborhood of three to four harvests. It may be more, it may be less, depending a little bit on uh, the year and your care. It's important to kind of take good records and know when the planting has peaked. And at that time, you need to be either already have another field in or be looking to plant another field. Contrast that to the plastic culture system, or also called the annual system. Uh, with this, instead of planting our plants in the spring, we plant in the fall. And we'll use the summer leading up to that fall for site preparation. We're going to till the field. We're going to create a raised bed that will be somewhere around 8 to 10 inches in height and slightly crowned so that it sheds water. The bed should be about 36 inches wide at its base. On top of the bed, we'll lay down a trickle irrigation in the center of the bed and then cover the bed with plastic. And usually black plastic is used. So it's important to have that trickle irrigation line down underneath the plastic because a lot of the rain is never going to get to the strawberry plant because of the plastic and the crown on the bed will prevent it from getting there. This slide shows a... Uh, a piece of machinery that pokes holes in the plastic at the desired spacing for the plants. We'll use a, a bed spacing somewhere about five feet from the center of one bed to the center of the second. With plastic culture, we plant our plants in the fall of the year. The period from mid-September to mid-October is generally our planting window, and it will depend a little bit on the location in the state uh, as to when you should plant. We don't want to plant too early because we can get runner production, and our goal with plastic culture is to not have any runners. They decrease our fruiting potential. And also, if we plant too late and we get an early frost, the plant's not actually uh, in the soil, the roots have not taken hold good, and a lot of plants could be actually heaved out of the soil. So mid-September to mid-October is the normal planting window. On top of the bed, we'll plant two rows of plants, and these rows will be about a foot apart. Within a row, the plants will be somewhere between 12 and 14 inches apart, and that depends a little on the variety. And we offset one row as compared to the others, so that we'll actually have a zigzag uh, arrangement of plants as you go down the row. That's for better light and also to give a little bit more room for production. We harvest the plastic culture fields in the spring of the year, generally from May through early June. You find that a plastic culture field usually will ripen its fruit a little bit ahead of a matted row. This may be due to the variety, but also due to the raised bed and black plastic causing the soil to heat quicker. After harvest, we destroy the planting. So we're going for one harvest and one harvest only on plastic culture. This slide shows several different varieties of strawberries. <coughs> The first three, Early Glow, Del Marvel, and All Star, are commonly used in matted row fields. Early Glow is probably the most uh, popular strawberry variety in, in uh, matted row systems in Tennessee at this time. Uh, it's a good quality berry, and it does ripen a little bit earlier than some of the other varieties. But another good facet or aspect of this plant is the fact that it shows good resistance to several major disease problems in strawberry. And this is critical for all growers, but especially critical for the organic grower because we don't necessarily have the arsenal of fungicides for disease control that you would have in conventional production. 
Early glow will ripen over about a two to three week period. One trait that we find with it is towards the end of the harvest, its uh, fruit size starts to drop off. And so most growers will have a second variety that's either a mid-season or a late-season ripening variety uh, to supplement that early glow field. And All-Star is right now probably the most common of the uh, later variety. Notice that it, too, has good resistance or tolerance to those diseases, and that's important. If we look at Chandler, Camarosa, and Sweet Charlie, those are the three most common plastic culture varieties currently being used in Tennessee. Chandler is the number one. Uh, they give us good yields, large berries, and pretty good flavor. But notice the disease resistance characteristics of the plants as compared to matted row. It's either unknown or susceptible. So from a disease standpoint, the plasticulture varieties are nowhere near as good as the matted row system. But with plasticulture, where we're going for one harvest and one harvest only, they work. The other type of, of plant we use is the day neutral. Uh, and we use this where we do season extension. That is with high tunnels or with greenhouses where we're trying to get ripe fruit earlier than what you do in the field or carry production on later than what you can in the field. We'll use season extension techniques and, and protective structures. One of the characteristics of day neutral strawberries is that they will continuously fruit when the temperatures are between about 40 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So they'll fruit over a long period of time. Now realize that as you get to each end of that temperature range, production is going to drop, but they still have a long fruiting window. And they actually may outproduce June bearing strawberries over the entire season, but they'll not have as much fruit at, within a short period of time as the June bearers. So, if you want to uh, grow strawberries for processing, like for canning, freezing, or making wine, you might want to use June bearers where you get that large amount of fruit within a short window. Uh, if your market uh, sets you up where you want strawberries over a long period, then a day neutral may well be the one for you. We grow day neutrals as annuals. And the varieties, Albion, Seascape, and San Andreas are uh, fairly common. There are others as well. Protected structures include things like high tunnels and low tunnels. And these tunnels are nothing more than a modified greenhouse. They have a single layer of plastic. They do not have an active heating or cooling system. We control temperatures within uh, limitations by opening the doors and rolling up the sides of the tunnels. But they will enable us to start uh, to extend our harvest later in the fall, in some cases even as late as on up into Christmas, or to start harvest earlier in the spring of the year. So they do have some ex season extension properties. Greenhouses will give us more of a window for harvest. Uh, we, with one, we can produce throughout the winter months because in the greenhouse we can supplement natural light, which is essential for good production, and we also can control temperatures within certain limitations. Even with a greenhouse, however, we're not going to try to grow throughout the middle of the summer. Generally, the heat that builds uh, is so expensive to try to modify and get it down to reasonable levels that the economics of strawberries in the midsummer are questionable at best. Is plastic culture a better method for organic production than matted row? It has several advantages, one of them being fewer weed issues. If you look at plastic culture systems, about 14 months elapse between the time we plant the plants until we destroy the planting. So that's all the time we have for weeds to develop, and a good bit of that's over the winter months. Contrast that to a matted row system where you may have multiple years involved in that one planting. Weeds and weed pressure can build considerably during that time. We also see less disease pressure in the plastic culture field, which is kind of interesting because the varieties that we use in plastic culture 
don't have the resistance that we see in matted row systems. But again, go back to the fact that you've got a 14-month period from the time you set the plants until the time you're destroying the planting in plasticulture versus the matted row system where you've got multiple harvests over multiple years. I hope that this has been of interest and of use to you. If you would desire more information on strawberry production or the production of any other fruit crop for Tennessee, please contact your local county extension office and they'd look forward to working with you. Thank you and have a nice day.